our service of worship today is August the 16th. It's a beautiful day in God's kingdom, and we're grateful that you've chosen to come and worship with us this day. And I pray that as you are here, that you will know that there's a presence of love that surrounds all of us, and that love is Jesus. And so now, as we prepare to worship him, may we join together for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our loving God, we thank you so much for all of the love you've shown to us and for the way you continue to carry us even when we are hurting and need so much help. Come, O oh Lord, into our presence. Touch us with your spirit. And may this time of worship be that which gives glory and praise to your name. For we ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And now, as you're able, I invite you to stand and join with us as we sing. yourself. Add your name to that list as well because when when you go into the world you are the hands, the feet, the very voice, sometimes the hug of God going into the lives of those around you. Sometimes it's a family member, sometimes it's uh, someone that you you see as you're entering the grocery store. All of them need to know that God loves them and you get to be the one who carries that message of God's love to them. So pray for strength, pray for guidance, pray for the words and for the love to share with those that you come in contact with. And now as we join together for prayer, I invite you to join with me for a moment of pastoral prayer and then join with us in our Lord's Prayer. May we pray. Loving Father, we thank you for this day for the opportunity that we have to come into your presence, here to lift our praise, here to make known our needs, here to grieve and to ask for your comfort and consolation. Lord, there are many hurting people in this world today, and sometimes we're the ones who are hurting as well, and we need your touch. We need your healing. We need your loving presence to hold us and to support us as we go through this time. We lift ourselves up, we lift up our families, we lift up our neighbors, and we lift up our church. Lord, that your spirit may touch us and anoint us with a fresh blessing to be a light and a witness to others. Father, we pray for those who are working to find a cure, a um, way to, to 
aid those who are sick with the uh, COVID-19 disease, those who are struggling to find a vaccine against that virus so that it might be stopped before it does more damage. And we pray, Lord, that you will hold those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, the death of loved ones, and those who are caring for those in hospitals and in care facilities, that they may all find your comforting presence. May we be filled with your love. May we know your presence guiding us and helping us to help others. We pray for our nation and for the nations of our world, for our leaders and the leaders of all the nations. We pray for the people that we might find peace, but also that we might find you in the midst of all that we're going through. For Lord, we need to see you and we need to know you are here. Comfort us, heal us, help us, strengthen us. We pray this in Jesus' name. And as he taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For our meet and greet time today, I'd like to ask you to reach out to those who live around you. Touch them with a card, a note, an email, a text. Say hello the next time you see them out. You may not be able to get very close because it's important to maintain a safe distance these days. But as you encounter them, let them know that you're, you're thinking about them, that you're praying for them, and that you're asking God to be present in their life. Reach out to family and friends. Reach out to those who sit with you at church. Reach out to those who you may have lost a relationship with and would like to have that restored. And then may God bless that time. May God bless that, that trust that he's working through you and in you to help others to know him better. I invite you to, uh, to remember your church as well. Continue to support us with your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings. We depend upon your gifts in order to sustain the ministry and the presence in our community that this church offers. And so, help us as you are able. There will be uh, information at the end of this video on how you might donate in order to support this ministry. And we thank you. Amen. 
give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. today comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. We're reading in the 15th chapter, verses 10 through 28. Hear these words. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May we pray? Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come into your word again and to hear your guidance, your witness to our lives. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts may be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strong rock and our redeemer. And may all of God's people say, Amen. So, what are you trying to say? When we look at text like this, and this text is put together um, by a group of, of learned scholars, people seeking to guide us through the uh, text of the various Gospels each week, put together so that we might have uh, a continuing and growing understanding of who Jesus is. Yet sometimes it seems that the text is uh, put together without much thought over how they relate. And today we have two stories. One story that deals with uh, Jesus addressing the issue of, of, of ritual cleanliness. In this case, the Pharisees complained that his disciples did not wash their hands before eating. And since they did not do that, they felt that they were, were defiling, and so therefore it was, uh, it was tantamount to uh, committing a sin that they did not wash their hands first. And Jesus says, hey, you got it all mixed up. The second story comes to us, and it talks about Jesus traveling to another region. Now, some will say he didn't really enter the region, but only came up to the border. But here we have another story which is altogether different from the first. 
And when this happens, we are curious, you know, what do we make of these two stories? How are we to, to work a story out of them that shares the love of God through the message? When we have these, we search. Okay, there's not a real connection that we can see between the issue over ritual versus spiritual defilement and the issue of healing a uh, Canaanite woman's daughter. We don't see that connection. And there isn't one that's definitely just this um, automatic go-to for uh, going from one story to the next. So when we have these types of situations, we start looking, okay, is there something overarching that we need to pay attention to? And in truth, there is. For what Jesus is seeking to do here is to continue to prepare the disciples by giving them lessons and then demonstrating or illustrating that lesson in a real life situation. So today when we open this text and we look to it, we see, okay, we have two issues that Jesus is seeking to share with the disciples so that they may know better how they will go and share God's love, the love that he is sharing with them when he has returned to his Father in heaven. And so he begins. We talked about how the, the Pharisees were bringing this issue and Jesus responds that, you know, it's not, it's not washing with unclean, it's not washing your hands that makes what you eat pure. And it's not going to defile you if you, if you uh, uh, eat with unclean hands. He said instead, what you, what you have to worry about is what comes out of the heart. What you have allowed to enter your heart and to grow there then becomes that which you speak from when you talk to others or talk of others or talk with others. When we, when we have this understanding that our hearts can be defiled, then we've got something that we can, we can address. This is a situation that we can work on. There's a place here for growth. And the Pharisees' complaint, well, Jesus says, the blind are going to lead the blind. Every plant that my Father has not planted will be pulled up. Oh, well, now that takes you a little bit of a flashback, at least I hope it does. For it was not too long ago that we talked about the parable of the wheat and the tares and how they would grow together until the end, but then would be um, pulled up, the weeds would be pulled up before the harvest so that they may be disposed of. And so he's using a demonstration here of how the parable uh, fits in to the life that they are living in. The situation is the Pharisees are the ones that are, are giving him that tough time, but they are not speaking from God's guidance, but instead from, and we're going to put this into a, a generic, we're going to speak of it from a human perspective. What we're seeing then is that they have no basis for their complaint. Instead, what they are using is just uh, argument that says, you're not like us. Well, no people, no two people are going to be just alike. And there will be no people in this world who find that there is only one way for everything to be done. Jesus talks to the disciples and he shares that what he's talking about with defilement has uh, a part to play in their lives in that they need to be careful what they allow into their hearts and the stories of the of the Pharisees the the uh, rituals that they speak of have to be have to be carefully compared to what God would say to us as to how we may stay pure for God's work Jesus then turns and goes to another region. And in this region, we, we experience a, a situation that has caused a lot of distress for most disciples. You see, Jesus in 
addressing the woman's need uses what the uh, biblical interpreters refer to as a slur. He says it's not, it's not fair for uh, us to take the food for the children and throw it to the dogs, thereby implicating or intimating that the woman there is somehow uh, less than human. We struggle with that because this is the Jesus who loves all people and who has taught us to love all people. He's the one that, that recognizes that we are all from God and that what we need to do is to be a part of sharing that love out to them through them so that the world may know of the love of God. When we struggle, well, you know, it asks us to look inside of ourselves. Are there places and are there times when we do not find others to be the same as us? We want to, we want to push them aside. We want to relegate them to a, 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 a lesser class than ourselves. And indeed, we do that. We take other people and we, we consider them to be less than ourselves in sometimes very subtle ways, but still ways that let them know that we do not, we do not actually live by the love of God. Instead, we're living by our own desires, how we want to be lifted up and raised up and praised above others how we want to be seen as the, uh, the best people and the ones who have that, that special relationship. Jesus, in refusing to answer the woman at first, sets up this clash that we will experience. And in setting it up, he invites us to pay attention you see the woman comes and she kneels down before him and she begs, please heal my daughter. Jesus then asks her, how great is your faith? Will you live through anything to help her? Wow. You see, because the, her answer is, you're not going to dissuade me from carrying out my request. You're not going to be able to push me aside and say that my request is somehow unworthy and therefore not something that you will do. You're not going to convince me to stop and to be quiet and to acknowledge that I have no, no right to make this request. Yes, I'm a woman from a different area. I'm a woman who's not a Jew. I'm a woman, first off, and that makes me somehow um, less in this society. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to ask for help for my daughter. And that doesn't mean that I don't expect you to give it to me. Hmm. Jesus looking upon her and hearing her request has found that which he's looking for. He's found the one who says that I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be faithful to what is right, to what is good, what is true. Taking her request, he then says, great is your faith. Your daughter has been healed. He says it in another way. He says, let it be according to your wish. And her wish was for her daughter to have the demon driven out of her. What is Jesus saying to us? In many ways, his words challenge us to, to look at the desires of our heart. What are the things that we ask help for? What are the healings that we seek? What is the mercy that we ask for? Jesus turns to us and he says, 
if you, if you will but ask, it will be given to you. We're ready for that. But are we ready to ask? We understand the relationship. You can't have something that you're not going to ask for. We understand that sometimes what we ask for may take more time than we want to give to it. We also may find that what we ask for might not be what is best. That can cause a problem. But Jesus says, let's start with what's the first problem, and that is you don't ask. Our prayers can sometimes end up being rather vague. And we use high and mighty words thinking that somehow or another we, we can't suppose upon God's mercy and grace. We can't suppose that He will, will do the things that we ask for just because we ask. But if we don't ask, how do we suppose that He will do anything? You see, there has to be a relationship here. And the relationship has to be that prayer leads to what you ask for being given you. If you don't ask, you won't receive. The story gives us that opportunity then to say, let me examine my life. What are the things that I really need? What do I need to go to God for? What is it that will most show my love to Him God, but also express my thanks for the love He's already shown me. As we look at this text, and as we understand Jesus' teaching for the disciples, we see in this a teaching for ourselves that we are to be sincere in our prayer needs that we are to reach out with God's love to, to God. <laughs> uh, that sounds kind of strange, doesn't it? To reach out with God's love to God. In other words, we're to mirror that love back to Him. For He's been pouring that love into our lives all this time. And He says, Will you love me? We can do that. We can do that by praying. We can do that by acting as God leads us to, doing the work He calls us to, taking the steps to accomplish what He's called us to, and then giving praise by sharing with others this reality that God's love is not just for one or two, is not for just the Jews. It is not just for those who are in churches that worship Christ. It is indeed for all people. God ask us this day to open our hearts, to open our minds, and to experience His love pouring into us. When that has filled our hearts, then we know how to pray. We thank You, O oh Lord, for all the blessings You've shown us. May Your love and Your light flow through us. Give us the healing we need, giving us the help we need give us hope to share. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we pray. Loving God, we thank you that you love us with such a deep and just unstoppable love. You call us to examine ourselves. Are we, are we really loving the way you do? Are we really caring? Are we really seeking you with all that we are? Make a new life within us. And may your love pour in. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, as you are able, I invite you to stand and join with us as we sing.